Hey everybody, happy holidays and happy playoff season. This is the live show, but we are not in the Horseshoe Lounge. We took it to a special location just down the street so yeah. that we could get into some of the X's and O's. This will be a playoff uh, preview. Georgia, Ohio State breakdown heavier on maybe the X's and O's than we normally would go, but we're still going to have a fun casual joint. We're still going to a fun casual chat. Even if we're not in a fun casual joint, we're still going to talk about Gift cards. It's more of a mindset than it is. A, 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 a <laughs> That's right. It is. That's right. You can take it wherever you want. Or you can just get catering, right, Jay-Z? And you yeah, get so you get the catering, you get the chips. You go in, you get, what, $50 of gift cards. You That's get right. 10 extra dollars to spend at Roosters. I mean, what could be better? Nothing. So we've got that coming in. We've got our Roosters catering on the way. We'll dig into that after mm. we're done here with Justin Zwick, Bobby Carpenter, Bill Landis, and myself, Austin Ward. So, all right, let's 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 get into it. The what is it? Five days away now. Mm. It's the day after Christmas. Wink, wink. <laughs> and it's finally getting here. Georgia's favored by six and a half in this matchup. Bob, what? It, kick us off. Where should we be looking? What's the most important matchup in this game? You know, I think there's, there's a couple of elements that are contingent, but you know, I look at Georgia's offense. I mean, they're driven by their tight ends. You know, Bowers and then uh, Darnell. Darnell Washington. Washington. I want to call him Darnell Sanders, the late great, the late mm. Buckeye tight end. Darnell Washington and uh, uh, Bowers. I yep. mean, both of those guys have been, you know, and then they're going to obviously work in McConkie as well, but they're going to run the ball. We all know that. But it's the big plays that come in the passing game, and especially in the red zone. They like to lean on those tight ends, and they're going to lean on Bowers. That's Bennett's guy. He's basically a hybrid, you know, large wide receiver. They'll move him around, shift him. He doesn't get in line very much. That's more uh, Darnell Washington and what he's able to do. But – You've got to be able to control those guys. And the problem is, like, you look at Darnell Washington, he's 6'8". You know, he's, he's like the mountain. Yeah. 6'8", like 280 pounds. Like, I don't know. There's no linebackers. It's like LeBron James playing Yeah, tight end. or defensive backs. Mm-hmm. He doesn't quite move as well as LeBron. But – That'd be scary if he did. But he did hurdle yeah, a guy yeah. early in the he year. He did hurdle a guy. So, you, like, look around. <laughs> so he's got like, some who, ability. Who do you have on the roster? I mean, they, they've got some good size safeties. You know, Eichenberg's a, a lar- taller-ish linebacker. Um, it would have been great, like, if you had a guy like McKenzie Melton that was maybe still – uh, not Mackenzie Mountain. Mitchell Mountain. Oh, Mitchell, Mitchell Mountain. Mountain. Yeah. Jeez, I'm all over the place today. They would be able to take care of it. But, like, maybe this is a game where you get, like, a guy like Sonny Styles involved. Maybe a little more. Um, you know, Josh Proctor's taller. Those are guys that you just want to get height on height. Mm-hmm. And then you find a way, you know, to bracket your other tight end. And then and, uh, Bowers, and <clears throat> that's what you kind of try to do. But those are their big play guys, especially in the red zone and especially on third down. So, that's the main one, and then obviously you got Jalen Carter up front, and how are you going to block him? <laughs> I don't know. Bill, what it, when, don't be his high school football coach. That's right. When you when you've watch teams face. try and defend Georgia <laughs> and those tight ends, I mean, they haven't done it with great success. Yeah. Georgia's undefeated, obviously. Those guys have a ton of numbers and touchdowns, and <clears throat> they've had some really high prolific games. Like, what do you think the solution would be? What have teams tried to do maybe, or what could Ohio State do with the, the, these guys that Bob mentioned? Yeah, I think it's about where you divert your extra resources. Like if you think about the, the Michigan game, Jim Knowles was pretty content leaving his corners on islands to, to defend what was not at that time a dynamic passing attack. He, I, don't think it, I don't think anything's changed since that time. <laughs> Or before that time. Right, just that particular day. It looks day. pretty dynamic. That particular, <laughs> day. particular day. Probably more lucky than dynamic, yeah, no, you're being right. honest. Yeah. Um, but he diverted everything to, to being up front, to stopping the run, to giving Michigan a lot of bodies to block. Um, I, I don't think you defend Georgia that way because while they are big up front and have good running backs, actually they don't run the ball a ton. They actually throw the ball more than Ohio State does. Um, I, I, so I think if you're, if you're Jim Knowles, you're looking at, okay, I'm going to take those extra resources that I diverted to the run against Michigan – and divert them to the tight ends against Georgia. Probably still leaving guys like Cameron Brown and Denzel Burke on islands outside. And, and frankly, I, I don't think those are terrible matchups with, like, Ladd McConkey or Kiaris Jackson Jackson or, or A.D. Mitchell. Like, those are good receivers. I don't think they're, they're the best receivers Ohio State has seen this year. And then can you double – I think it's more mostly about doubling or bracketing Brock Bowers. I, Darnell Washington is a, is a freak. I don't know how much he really scares you, like, over the middle of the field. It's like, what, what are you going to do, put it – Lathan Ransom on Ronnie Hickman's shoulders and try to defend him. Like I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think that's that's uh, or feasible. Um, but I do think you can try to bracket a guy like Bowers or, or send him some double. Teams. Lathan's pretty bow legged. He could probably he brings, <laughs> <a little laughs> spit on top yeah. and run. Yeah. 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 So if it's like a if it's like a steel chambers underneath and a Lathan on top of Bowers, I think you do some stuff like that. We saw them do a little bit of that against against Michael Mayer, throw throw two bodies his way. So I don't think you can stop him. But the, the only thing you can do is try to do what he did against Mayer, which was he had like. What seven catches, I think, but he didn't score. So I think that's probably the best you can hope for. Yeah, it's almost 
come full circle, right, Jay-Z? I mean, we're talking about Mayer in the opener and the yeah. threat of the tight end yeah. being the thing that Ohio State had to account for. Well, no, and, and, and I heard some this week, and I, I didn't dig into it, but uh, I forget the guy's name who said it. Say Aiken. Uh, it was a uh, it was a Clay stat in, in in our in our defense of running backs and re- tight ends catching yeah. the ball. Like we're highly ranked in the country in defending those types of plays. Number right? two, I believe. Number, yeah, that's what I heard. Number two. I didn't want to say it just in case it was wrong, but number two. And then you know we're fifty second or fifty third in you know guarding receivers. So yes, it's big. I think we came into the year with with a great tight end, had a game plan for him. I think we might use some of that stuff to come in and and. and combat these guys, or the, the big one anyways, right. uh, who, who kind of does a little bit of everything. You know, I, I think this game, yeah, gosh. Looking at it, this quarterback's good. I mean, he's a walk-on. He's done this. He's little. He's all that. But, I mean, he, he's put up some numbers this year. Bill just talked about how they aren't really a running team. They have three backs who average five yards a carry, so they can do it, and they can get going on it, and they, you know, kind of ride them a little bit. But mm-hmm. Stetson Bennett, is, he's the real deal. And, you know, he, he's – He's been there. He's got a ring on his finger. He's been in big games. You know, I, I think we're going to have to get some pressure on him. You know, who's going to be that guy? We haven't really – I mean, JT's had some games. You know, he's had a couple games. We've had guys, you know, show flashes. Uh, I think it's going to be huge that we are able to get some pressure on him while defending that run and giving our guys help with the tight ends that they have. On the other side, you got receivers. Our guys haven't done a great job this year of getting tackles when they needed, when they know there's no help on the back, you know, on the back side and – you know, big plays. So, yeah, I think Stetson Bennett is, is going to create a problem um, just in his, his confidence and knowing what they're going to want to do and how they want to attack. And, you know, if his offensive line gives him time to do it, I, I think it's going to be a tough tough go for these, this defense of the Buckeyes. Yeah, I, I look at it, and Bob, tell me if you agree or don't agree. Like, they have given up a number of explosive plays. Normally that amount is five or less that Jim Knowles accepts, and I – and I wrote about this earlier uh, last week, I guess, that you know it was really a one-game exception where the explosives turned into touchdowns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know that there was an, a problem with the Jim Knowles game plan, and I'm not trying to put it – he took responsibility, as he always does, for the calls. He wants, he wants the blame on him and the credit for the players. There was the missed tackle. There were a couple blown coverages. Uh, we can argue about the amount of times that they brought pressure or if it was the right time or the wrong time. Maybe that part can be a conversation for Jim Knowles, but it did seem like they just didn't execute or put somebody on the ground, and it really only caught up with them one time, right? It's not good. doesn't excuse that they lost to Michigan, but I don't see that as some glaring weakness that Ohio State couldn't correct on New Year's Eve. And so, like, everything was highly correctable. You didn't have guys who were just getting beat physically. I mean, everybody there has the physical ability. Um, like you mentioned, it's getting guys tackled. And then the blowing, blowing of coverages, a lot of times it was just due to, man, like lack of eye control and just simple discipline. So I, that's, a, that's a coaching point that you can get locked into and say, hey, when you're playing man, you're not good enough to play man and look in the backfield. There are certain guys that are. I mean, they're all Hall of Famers in the NFL, but <laughs> most guys are not, and that's not a crime. And so you've got to be able to lock in, keep your eye control, understand exactly they're going to try to double move you. There's times the blitz might not get there, and if that's the case, then maybe we lay off of that a little bit mm-hmm. and trying to figure that out. But they've, they're going to have to bring some pressure to get to Stetson Bennett. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's a good, not great athlete. He's not Lamar Jackson or Michael Vick running around back there. You know, so there, there's some elements of things they're going to have to do to bring some pressure down his face. And then ultimately you've got to stay locked on. And the biggest thing is, like, you just can't bust. Like, if he – if this team does and performs what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to do it, I'm not worried. I get worried about guys freelancing a little bit, trying to press, strain a little too much, be do the something. Hero. Yeah, be the hero. And maybe being a little bit undisciplined while you're doing that, and that's what leads to those big plays. Talk about five explosive gains a game. X gains are usually defined as, you know, runs of over 10 to 12, passes of over about 20, or passes of over 20, mm-hmm. 25. So, I mean – you have five of those. Let's just say they average, you know, 25, 30 yards a piece. That's, what, 150 yards that you're really talking about there? I mean, the rest of the time they do pretty – you give up 100, 100 yards and change, you're still under 300 yards of offense, which is a heck of a day. Mm-hmm. And so that's just – you can give up the pass. Just get them to the ground. You can have them bust a run fit. Just free safety has to make sure that they get to the ground. And that's what didn't happen against Michigan because you've – if you force teams to drive the ball and you have a talented defense, I ultimately believe you will get stops. 
Yeah, I think the problem with with, with defending Georgia, at least it <clears throat> appears to me this year, is like it's really hard to get to Stetson Bennett. He's yeah. he is, I believe, he is the least pressured quarterback in the country. CJ, I think, is fourth. So there are two quarterbacks mm-hmm. who live pretty comfortable lives. That's why I think a guy like Mike Hall was like so important in this game. And, Big uh, hell, yeah, if, healthy. If he Mike can, Hall. if he is healthy and be able to wreck a game like we've we've seen him do early in the year, like. I don't know, you know Jay Z. Like, what's a quarterback hate? Pressure directly. <laughs> into yeah. You don't well, want pressure of any kind, yeah, but yeah, especially up that middle because you got nowhere yeah. to go, right? You so, got nowhere to step up. Yeah. So if they can find a way to generate that, whether it's with Mike or Blitz and Tommy, like they're just gonna find a way to make him uncomfortable because he's he's a good athlete, probably an, an underrated athlete. He can do stuff extending plays, but if he has to run around for his life the entire game, I think you take that oh, as a yeah. state. <laughs> so um, I, I, it's it's easier said than done because their offensive line is really good. But if they can get him rattled a little bit, and and really no one's been able to. Um, I think that does wonders for Jim Knowles' defense in this game. Well, as you said, Stetson Bennett can move around enough to make plays, and we've seen him do that in his career. Like, that's a problem for any defense. I, people bring that up all the time. Well, Ohio State really struggles yeah. with mobile <laughs> quarterbacks. Like, I mean, who doesn't? Yeah, like, yeah exactly. They, they, they're, they're an element. Football. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that makes it hard to defend. Like, so is Stetson Bennett going to run away a bunch of times from Zach Harrison or JT Tuomola? I mean, that's the challenge for them, right? Mm-hmm. They can't let that happen. Yeah, so, I mean, I think he has – I mean, he's not a runner, like you said. He's that he scrambles, right? He's got a, under 200 yards rushing for the year, which when he had in sacks, that's probably not bad. Uh, not that he's had a ton of sacks, but you know, seven TDs was one thing I saw for him. Isn't that number was like, well, like, whoa! I know. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'm looking at comparisons to quarterbacks. I'm yeah. like, all right, you know, they're about the same, about the same. He's got a little bit better completion, more yardage, and then seven TDs. I'm just like, geez. So I mean, when they get in that goal line, they they like to go to him or you know, whatever it is, he, he you know, he's the got right the magic place, yeah. or he's scrambling around to get to that, you know, the pylon. So, I, I mean, that's that's a big thing in the red zone to keep an eye on for him. You watch the – I think you go watch the uh, – who do they play to open the season? Oregon? Oregon. 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 You go watch that and you're watching him run around. I think that that is – that's in bed at his best. I think that was the best game he probably played all year. And it's – he's scrambling, you know, in the red zone to pick up yards, scrambling to buy time to find guys – you know, and he was really on point, but he's a guy who doesn't really want to stay in the pocket. He's not very tall. Yeah. yeah. And so he wants to and be his own line like, is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He yeah. can't see. And that's why, you know, they try to get some play action, get some shots to Bowers on crossers and things like that. But you know, as far as just standing up, throwing a quick game and stuff over the middle, like that's that's tough when you're someone who's like six foot barely. I mean, he's not that tall. Yeah, that's um that's gonna be a, a key element there. Offensively, where does it start for you, Bill? You know, uh <laughs> It's going to sound weird because it's odd to compare these two teams. But if you look at what Kent State was able to do against Georgia, I think there is a replicable plan in there for Ohio State. Obviously with much, much better players <laughs> and talent at its disposal. But I think the ideas are similar. Kent State played with a lot of tempo. Um, they, th- they threw a lot of bubble screens. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Don't tell us that. <laughs> But and like, tempo, we can't we can't like, not jump off side or know, you know, well, start. But like it was it was effective. I think the, the Kirby Smart and it's it's not dissimilar. I think from Brent Venables, he wants to kind of see what you're doing or whoever's calling Georgia's defense. They want to see what you're doing and then try to check something real late to defend that. If you do the sugar huddle stuff that Ohio State did in the Sugar Bowl against Clemson and and get the line quickly and snap it, that works. Or if you play fast, that works too. You got to try to keep them in their base defense and and reasonably be able to predict what they're going to do. And then you're you're on the attack and you're dictating the terms. I think Ohio State can do that. We haven't seen them do a lot of it, and that's like that's the thing I keep coming back to. It's like if if Ohio State's offense plays its best game, they can score on Georgia and they can absolutely beat Georgia. It's just a matter of like, well, can they get there? Because we've not seen them get there. Yet. So, but the, but the the pieces are there for sure. Part of it is you have to stay on the field. Like yeah. you can't yeah. let that defense rest. Yeah. And I look at Kentucky this year. I mean, they played them very tough, but I look at their game last year and what Kentucky was able to do them do to them, and they only scored six points. They could not convert in the red zone. Mm-hmm. But ran a ton of play action, a lot of lateral things, some of the bubble screens that you love so much, you know, some misdirection. And they ran with tempo. They'd slow it down. They'd tempo, slow it down. And they just stayed on the field. And that's, I think it was 14-6 at halftime. Like, all right, they've given themselves a chance to win right now. They just couldn't punch it in when mm-hmm. they were able to get down there. But when you do that, it doesn't allow Georgia mm-hmm. to sub. And so their defensive line is really good. And But I hope Jalen Carter plays 80 plays. Oh, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Keep Wear him, him out. Keep yeah, they want to play a ton of guys. Large yeah. rear end on the field so that he can't get off the field and he can't get rest, he can't get gassed up. And so you get out there, you get tired. And that's the one secret of being able to stop teams with dynamic defensive lines. Lateral, misdirection, and then if you can have tempo. If you can sprinkle in not, some tempo, right? Not yeah. let them, and not let them get off the field so that they – once they get so tired, dude, it'll take them – 10 seconds to get off the field. You have to call a timeout because mm-hmm. those guys can't run. They're gas. They played seven or eight plays in a row. Yeah, I think that's one thing this year that I was kind of frustrated with. It, it seemed like we were always at the line of scrimmage. All right. A lot. A 
lot of that. Yeah. And then you were waiting, and then it's like, all right, we got six seconds on the play clock, and you were trying to get it in, and it's just, you know, but when we would go tempo and not fall start, it'd be like, oh, what do we do? You know, we're, we're driving the ball downfield. It looks like we're – Fourth just quarter, a, Penn State, I think, was the best example. Yes, of that. yes, right, and it just feels like we're in better synergy, or you know, our offense is just moving a little bit better. And you know, like to Bob's point, though, you can't just go tempo and score, 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 because your defense is going to get worn out, and you know, it's just not going to be good for you. So you got to just, it's a, it's a fine line to walk, I guess. Uh, you know, sprinkling that tempo in, staying on the field, wearing those guys out. Calling the certain plays, now, bubble screens. I can't wait. Well, Fine, hey, you want hey, one I'm, will work in this game. We imagine, almost had one in the last game. Yeah, this imagine how much yes, how much enough. you'd love bubble screens fair. if Rebecca hadn't dropped oh, listen, one. As, bu- as an old quarterback, you love the bubble screen because <laughs> you get all those yards. <laughs> you know, like here, take it and go. Uh, but they just haven't seemed to work for us. Maybe this will be the game. We've been you know setting it up all year for just this <laughs> hey, one game against Georgia. You run the bubble a lot. You haven't really burned the bubble slips. So maybe you slide hey, somebody well, through yeah, there. There we go. Save it up for uh-huh. when it really matters. Yeah, that's right. I, I felt like this stuff that Bill is talking about with the, the tempo or sugar huddling and all that stuff, we've seen it work for Ohio State. When they haven't used it, I feel like there were at least a couple times I took notice of what Michigan was doing, and they were adjusting late and adding to the box. They, they look to – C.J. Stroud looks to the sideline. Ryan Day sends in their other call. They signal it in. And they're like, all right, well, as Jay-Z saying, the clock's ticking down. And like, all right, well, let's get – they're going to go to the run. And then Michigan adds two defenders to the box, and they run right into it. I think they – They've There's gotten themselves into trouble, that, right? Yeah, yeah, they've got. If you're letting the defense dictate to you, that just seems backwards. I know that probably sounds uh, offensive to you, Bob. But <laughs> offensive, like, yeah, to a defensive player, <laughs> offensive to a defensive player. But like, you, that shouldn't be how it works. Yeah, I mean, ideally, like you said, you'd like to be able to dictate how, dictate tempo, get up on the line, and go. And, and some of that's going fast, and other times it's get up there and slow it down. But if they, if you've been going fast, it'll force them to get set, and it'll force them to show your hand. Mm-hmm. And that's why the variations in tempo would be, will be very critical. And I'm curious to see how Ryan Day deploys that because, you know, it's something like you said. You get them up at the line, it limits what you can do, and you're going to have a more simplistic call. You can't have a lot of blitzes. You can't have a lot of checks. And if you motion or something, you'll really get to see how complicated it is because there's a lot of stuff going on. They will, they'll stop doing it if you get hurry-up tempo, and then all of a sudden you're like, boom, swap the back, yep. or boom, trade the tight end. And they're like, okay, well, now it's not just set it and forget it anymore. Bill, we're going to do uh, a more extensive breakdown with the Roosters' Buckeye leaves once Berm gets in here, but mm-hmm. you have to have your shot. So Bob and Jay-Z can still think about theirs. But okay. You, one guy that needs to shine the most on New Year's Eve. Uh, man, I mean, uh, can I just take the layup and sure. say C.J. Stroud? Like, sure. No! <laughs> that was mine! C. <laughs> Jay-Z's going to do it later on yeah, anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's obvious, but he's got he's to play the game of his life, and and – I think part of that is is extending plays and and perhaps yes. running a bit more than he's done in the past. And like it's not you don't need to run read option ten times, but yeah. if he's back there and option one, option two is not there, and there's green space in front of you, take the green space. Don't wait for three and four to come open because that's when he's gotten himself in trouble this year, and you just can't do that against Georgia's defense. So um, I think he has it in him. Um, we've perhaps not not seen that. <laughs> we haven't seen him on the playoff stage uh, clearly, but we've seen him in big games, and maybe he hasn't quite got to his maximum level in these big games. He's got to lay it all out there because this is this could be his last game if he doesn't do it. So um, he is the best quarterback in this game, and if he reminds people of that, then Ohio State can win. Yeah. What's your score prediction? <laughs> so with that said, <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, I just like <clears throat> I think Ohio State can win, but I'm not gonna pick them. Just like they've – I just can't bet on them showing me something they haven't shown to this point this year. But I think it's going to be close, and I think it's going to be high scoring. Uh, so I have Georgia 42-35. All right. That score sounds familiar. Uh, that's a good one. High scoring battle. You said they were going to score 40, so you can't, you can't change <laughs> you that. You hit that. Yeah, <laughs> I have to stay with that. Yeah. Uh, we are going to take a quick break. Um, Roosters is a fun casual joint. They've got – Gift cards, they've got things going on for the holidays. They've got catering. Make sure that you get that. Appetizer Tuesday. Appetizer Tuesday will be going on. We're not sure exactly. And and it's going to be fantastic, whatever it is. Yummy, whatever it is. So we can count on that. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. 
All right, welcome back into Not the Horseshoe Lounge, but this is the live show brought to you by Roosters. It's a fun casual joint. Firm is checked in, and we're going to dive in even further uh, to our Peach Bowl breakdown. Love it. What is the most important matchup to you, Berm? You know, I think it's interesting if you look at Georgia's offense versus Ohio State's defense, and what Georgia does well is what Ohio State actually defends fairly well. Uh, I was worried about Michigan and the ability to throw the ball to the running backs out of the backfield. <clears throat> Ohio State's defended the tight ends and the running backs pretty well this year. Um, what they've not they done took well. the challenge from week one when you said that Meyer's going to have uh, what they've not done well yards what they've not done well is defend wide receivers. They heard you. Um, so <laughs> Georgia does not necessarily make their money on the outside. Uh, although Marcus Rosemi uh, Saint Jackson or whatever his name is now uh, is is a really good. <laughs> I only remember him from high school when he was Marcus Rosemi. Uh, Tito State. Jackson. No, uh, well, Ohio State was recruiting him pretty hard out of uh, Saint Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, but. Um, him and then uh, Did you just put an S on Fort Lauderdale. It's Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, it's like it's you go to you go to, you go to Myers, you go to Kroger, There's you other. go to Fort Lauderdale. Okay, yeah, um, he's, a mid- he's a Midwestern to his core. Yeah, so, so does <laughs> Marcus Rosemi and and Lad McConkey are are not exactly uh, they're not world beaters on the outside. So I think that's an interesting matchup for Ohio State, but uh, it is difficult to cover both tight ends at the same time. I don't. I agree with Bill. I don't think that Darnell Washington's the guy that's going to beat you a lot in the passing game, but his his impact is in the run game. Um, I do worry a little bit about Stetson Bennett and his wiggle ability and uh, the ability to Wiry. get out of the pocket um, and, and extend some plays. That's an area where Ohio State has struggled all year long. He's no like he's not an elite athlete, but he's good enough to make some to extend some plays. So um, that's really kind of reminds you of a Tate Forcier. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> he's got a little tater in him. A little Seems like a more productive version of Tate Forcier. Yeah, he's got a touch of tater. Well, I mean, to be honest, uh, Tate Forcier didn't have. 50, 58 five-star players around. That's him, so very true. We don't know exactly mm-hmm. how Tate Forcier could have grown. Okay. We could have seen a much greater Tater <laughs> if he had players. Taters. Around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh-huh. Taters. <laughs> yeah, taters. Oh. But, yeah. No, I mean, ultimately, th- this battle is going to come down to the trenches and, and who who plays best. If you go back to Ohio State in the last game like this that we've really seen the Buckeyes play, the 2014 Sugar Bowl against Alabama, no one thought Ohio State would be able to play with Alabama up front. We, we were watching Jacoby Boren against just monsters, but he was winning. Yeah. So you need to have a, a day like that. Tonight we skate with them? Yeah. <laughs> tonight we stay with Tonight we beat the Soviets? That's it. You need to have guys step up and, and play better than they've played all year. I don't know if it was a miracle, Bob. I mean, at six and a half. I mean, it's not exactly. That game, Miami was thir- or the moment the Miami game was 13 and a half, and Bama was over 12. I think it was 13 as well. 12 and a half, maybe. Oh, yeah. Long Crazy, odds. Guess, yeah. Wow. Long well, odds. But they had the gray on the sleeves. So Ohio they did, and then they're bringing them back. Ohio against the world. <clears throat> Woody against the world is the new version of that, it seems. Uh, sell T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> get that going. Uh, let's get into our it's, roosters. It's weird they don't put the Woody in, against the world because, you know. The one uh, man against the world? Yeah, otherwise it sounds like you're talking about legendary Coach Hayes, and, like, that's not what's happening. He's ta- they're talking about the vibe in the building. Or, like, the lead character from Toy Story. Maybe. That is. I don't know. Have you seen Toy Story 4? Woody was really against the world in a lot of ways. I'm about halfway through 3 right now. Oh. You haven't got to – you've yeah. never been to 4? Well, no. We, oh, well, I forgot how little – we did. We went 1 to 4 and then to 2, and then we got 3 recorded. So, we're uh, – yeah, we're about halfway through it. Well, recorded? Get Disney Plus, Jay-Z. What's no wrong? Way. Are you kidding me? Don't I'm giving my money to those people. Okay. <laughs> we're going to continue this <laughs> breakdown of Ohio State and Georgia. Uh you know, what What else other than in the trenches is going to matter the most in this game? That's Scoring that's points. Scoring more points than them. That seems in the like red zone, scoring red zone. touchdowns. Because you, if you look at the, even the SEC championship game, LSU went down the field, kicked five, a field goal, and it got blocked for a touchdown. You know, but that would have been a three-to-nothing lead for them. LSU had 500 passing yards against yeah. Georgia. Now, seems, I think a lot of that comes in the second half where they're – I understand that. You know, Bill but backup quarterback threw for nearly he three He threw for a bunch of them, yes. So, like, Bill Parcells' rule was every 100 yards of offense, you should have seven points. Because if you don't, that means you're not scoring in the red zone, you're turning the ball over, or you're having mm-hmm. a crap ton of penalties, or you have really terrible field position. I mean, you may have all of them. All but things. you've got to find a way to get down there and ultimately score and convert those things. And so that kind of encapsulates all of those statistics. High State's put up a lot of yards. They put up a lot of yards against Michigan. Yes. You've got to find a way to convert those. Tress was huge on that. I mean, we'd kick field goals all day long, but in big games, he always made sure that he was trying to get touchdowns because he knew that that was the delineating factor of when you would win those critical battles. And this season, notwithstanding where Ohio State has felt a little wonky in play calling, the Achilles heel of Ryan Day's tenure has been the ability to score inside the red zone 
in those big games. So if you go back to the Clemson game in 2019, that game. Ironically, though, they got that remedied the next year in a big way. Yeah. Utilizing but, the tight ends. Right, but the right then time. it hasn't yeah. gone back. So mm-hmm. that, that, that has been the issue. So uh, the, you have to see, and this is what I talked about on uh, last Monday, was creativity on offense. Like, you've got to bring everything you have here. And this can't be a, a situation where Ryan Day and the offense says, hey, we're just going to do what we've always done because everyone knows what you do. Like, we can all see it. <laughs> We, we, we are all pretty able to predict exactly what play Ohio State's going to run depending on what's t- down in situation. It, it's a lot of plays, though, that like, you know would work for Ohio State in the red zone that have just disappeared. I think about, like, the motion K.J. Hill back in the backfield and then send him right back out in the field. Yeah. No one could stop it. You had, you know, the rollout throw to Chris Olave that was unstoppable. You know, obviously, you could pull they the ball out. They ran that once this year. Yeah, pull the ball out. You know, Dwayne Haskins did that one time. It's like completely caught him off guard, right? In 2018 when they played TCU down there. Mm-hmm. You, know, you only have to do it a couple times, right? I mean, <coughs> you're not going to have 50 plays in the red in zone. The red zone. <laughs> I mean, ideally you would like to have 50 plays in the red zone. I mean, that would I be mean, nice. You're getting down there a lot. Yeah. That'd but be. Ideally, I mean, you would like to be able – if they – gosh, 75% touchdown – Right, if they get that, I think three out of four. Win. Yeah, win the game. three out of four. I think you win the game. Um, I, th- I, I don't think to ha- not to have a problem, but I think they'll be able to move the football. But when you get down there, and it's advantage defense because they don't have to guard as much field, so you can't stretch it. You know, mm-hmm. those underneath throws Although, aren't there anymore. All those windows become smaller, and you, everything you have else. a wideout that can win on anybody. Now they're going to probably double them and do some stuff. So okay, now that's advantage you. How do you attack the rest? <laughs> Who else can go out there and win? Yep. You know, can Emeka Ibuka win? Can Julian Fleming win? Can you run the ball? Can Cade Stover yeah, win? Can Cade Stover, Cade Stover, yeah. Cade Stover look a little – like the Michigan game, he looked good all year. The Michigan game yeah. was just an anomaly for him to have a bad day. We expected him to make those plays in the Michigan yes. game based off how he played the rest of the year, right? So it's Had a, had a little bit of guard. a hip issue. Yeah, he, was, hurt his, he hurt his leg at, at Northwestern, and so you had two weeks not as that where – well, that's true, but, you know, no, I know if, if one part of your body's not feeling right, the rest of you feels a little bit uh, off as well. Yeah. So. You, I'm just saying, like he played so well, yeah. we expected him to make those plays, and it's just like, oh man, what? Uh, but you're no, hoping I mean, that this time off allows all these guys mm-hmm. to be able to be healthy and be their best, and that's that's ultimately, you know, Bill talked about it um, er, earlier this uh, last week, is that it's not necessarily if the Buckeyes win or lose this game, it's how you play, and I, obviously, so whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think. I mean, I mean, obviously, I, everyone wants. I can understand. I, I will kind take, of what I'll you're take saying. It, I'll take an ugly win. Yeah, I'm, I mean, saying, I would take I'm saying uh, how, whether they win or lose, if they go out in this game and play with their hair on fire and play great football, Buckeye football, people are going to at least look at the game. Silver you're just saying as long as they don't get football. as long as they don't get smoked. As long as you don't go out there and lay another egg in in a, in a huge game with everyone watching, I think that's really the R.I.P. Mike Leach, yeah. the egg bowl. Exactly. That wasn't the segue that I thought we were going to have. We were teed up perfectly <laughs> until you went into the tro- trophy precip- precipitation trophy. Precip- participation I'm just trophy. Saying, I'm just saying That's got that me rattled, What boys. matters <laughs> is that for Ohio State, this is all about perception right now as, as far as what is this program going to be. If you go out there and you go toe-to-toe, toe-to-toe with Georgia and you lose this game 38-35 and you show, hey, we can compete on this level, it changes the perception of things as opposed to what the Big Ten dealt with in the playoff from 2016 through 2020, where you go out there and every time you send a team out there, they're getting their doors blown off. You right. just can't do that. Okay, well, let's get into some Roosters Buckeye leaves, guys that have to shine to avoid that situation that you're talking about, Berm, a negative one. Who's going to tilt it in a positive direction? Am I going first? Yes. Uh, I believe this is an Emeka Abuka game. I, I think that, uh, obviously, as Bob said, like you know that Georgia is going to do everything they can to try to minimize the impact of Marvin Harrison. Emeka's healthy. Julian's healthy. Cade's healthy. Mayan's healthy. I think that what you have with Emeka Abuka is a guy that's a matchup problem for anybody, especially uh, cornerbacks like Georgia's who are – who l- want to get their hands on people, and if you let them get your hands on you at the line of scrimmage, you might have some trouble. But they they're you they can get beat, and Emeka's quickness will make him a guy that's going to be open. He just got to catch the ball. He struggled with that in the last month too. So um, to me, he's a guy that can really have a big day. I'm thinking like 11, 12 catches for him. Okay, Buka. All right, Bob. Mm. Mm. Gosh. So many places to go. Well, just slag it up. Slag it, it, it up. Pick one <laughs> on each side of the ball. Uh, you know that. That's an easiest. It really is. But it's still, like, you take it Mecca, I mean, you 
mean, it's uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. out there. I mean, I think try- you have to throw to Marvin even if they're double teaming him. Yeah, I Let think you can go. too. I mean, you can't, you can't allow them to take him I out mean, of the game. I watched the 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 uh, Garrett Wilson catch in Clemson. And I've watched that. I'm like, gosh, I mean, that was a decently thrown ball, but he just climbs the ladder <laughs> and just literally jumps over someone to yeah. get it. Like that's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the safeties. The safeties, because I think they're the ones that are going to have to be able to take care of Washington mm-hmm. and Bowers. Like those two guys, those guys back there, the combination of Ronnie Hickman, Lathan Ransom, uh, Tanner McAllister, Tanner Josh, McAllister, McAllister who, uh, Josh you know, Proctor, or Josh Proctor, yeah, whoever they decide through bowl practice yeah. gives us our best option th- to help slow there, this down. I think there's going to be a multitude of packages they'll deploy, but those guys being able to slow down the, t- the tight ends because that's where their big <clears> plays have come <throat> from. You know, they're not big play on the outside. You know, they'll have hit some big plays in the running game, but. Really, I mean, it's it's Bowers, They're man. Moving they, Bowers around, and they move him around. They motion him. They run the deep crosses. They do all that stuff. He's their red zone threat, like all those things. And so the safeties are going to be one of the tasks. They'll be the ones that are tasked with stopping him. And so I'm going to lean onto that position group because it it may it'll be a multitude of people depending on what he's doing and where mm-hmm. he goes. Yeah. Jay-Z? Uh, I'm going to pick a position group as well, the offensive line. Uh, you know, everything you hear about this Georgia defense, front four, linebackers, everybody gives them the edge, you know, when comparing the two teams. Uh, we've heard about him all year long. The big guy in the middle, you know, we have to stop him from creating havoc. So, really, I say the offensive line, but I think those you know, guards in center. You know, are you going to be able to handle him? Are you going to be able to, you know, get in there? We talked about Jacoby Bourne going up against, you know, these monsters of Alabama, but he won. You know, are we going to take this month that all we've heard is your underdogs, they're this, they're that. Is our offensive line going to come out and say, you know what? Yeah, we're coming for you. And, uh, you know, we're going to take care of business, give CJ time. And, I, and I, you know, to schlegs it up a little bit. I think Mayan is going to have have an impact on this game. You healthy, you need somebody, a bulldozer, to get down there and get those tough yards because they're going to be tough against this team. And, uh, you know, I think he's the guy that, that you want holding the ball and, and getting those yards for you. Yeah, there's a lot of intrigue with that as well with the offensive line. Like Matthew Jones, we don't know how mm-hmm. close to 100%. I mean, he's yeah. not going to be 100% yeah. with that foot. Um, is Ohio State going to play him anyway? It was a game-time decision for Michigan. Didn't get, end up, wind up going. You had Josh Fryer and Enoch Vamahi both getting looks there. Yeah. You know, at some point you have to know definitively what you're going to do because Jalen Carter is a problem in there. And yeah. I mean, our offensive line is going to have to play their best game, in my opinion, right. to win this game. You're either going to be testing the guy who you think is hurt or testing the new guy who's in there. That's where George is going to send him, right? right? I mean, that's yeah. – You would that's, think so. That's how that's going to work. I think that uh, Cade Stover is going to have to mm. play his best game with the Buckeyes in this one. He was hurt in, down the stretch. There were a lot of people talking about missing – you know, blocks on the perimeter and the bubble screens weren't as effective when they were trying to get lateral, all that stuff. He was missing some opportunities. I know how much that irritates him. I'm sure. And part of it is the injury, which he doesn't want to make excuses and he won't. And that's cows, fine. Don't, cows don't take days yeah, off. Cows don't, right. cows don't make excuses either. Nope. No. They don't. They just Cade go out there. Talk. They just go out there. <laughs> they don't talk. They just go out and grind. Cade would prefer not to do that either. Yeah, and I'm sure. Yeah, he doesn't want to do any part of that. But he wants to. Over, Okay. Who says more words on media day next Thursday? Kate Stover. Kate or, to- yeah. or Tommy? Yeah. More than so, Tommy? <laughs> actually, later on today, Ohio State's two representatives, for, for some reason that I do not understand, the Peach Bowl decided that their first media opportunity was going to be on Zoom. It was just supposed to be the coaches, and then they just, all right, well, we'll add two more players. Why is it on Zoom when we're all going to be there? Nobody knows. We don't want it. It's stupid. But So Ryan Day is going to be joined by Tommy Eichenberg and mm. Cade Stover. Yes. For what could awesome. be yes. the best interview like, ever. I, I really hope that Ohio State was just like, you're going to make us do a Zoom with our media? Good. Enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> These two guys are going to make you rue the day that this was the approach that This you is took. the money-making uh, game for a lot of these Ohio State players. I mean, is th- these next two games, yeah. think about – Paris Johnson, Dewan Jones, Kate Stover. I mean, this is a uh, C- C.J. Stroud. Mm-hmm. This is a, a step up and show that you are everything everyone's told you and said that you are. So there's a lot of guys who are going to be in a position. Well, and Tommy's one of those. Yeah. The, the draft feedback said go back to school. Really? All right. Why don't I show you what I can do instead? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm. it, 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 there's a lot of intrigue around a lot of these players, but you're not going to get a better two-game window to show people what you're all about than, than these next two if Ohio State can take care of Georgia. So a lot, lot of money on the line, a lot of, lot of pride on the line, a lot of, lot of money on the line. A lot of money. Pride, on money. Speaking of money, where are you putting your money, bro? Yeah, Nicole, Nicole's <coughs> prediction. Let me make sure that I get it right. 38-33. 38-33. Buckeyes is Nicole's prediction. Jay-Z. Golly, Moses. I was thinking about this this morning. Good. A lot of thoughts. <laughs> 
I think it's going to be a, a, a great game. <laughs> I, I think if our best team shows up and their best team shows up, I think we would win the game. But as Bill said, like we, they haven't showed it to us this year. In the biggest game of the year, it didn't go so well. Um, and I think this Georgia team is a better Michigan team in a way. Um, I think it's going to be a high score. Like Bill thought, I'm somewhere in the 45 to 38 range. A late touchdown to go ahead. For who? For who, Jay-Z? <sighs> I'm taking the Buckeyes. Oh, there it is. I'm going Bucks. They get it done. They have CJ has a great game. He's gonna have to. The O line plays well for him, and then all of his athletes just do their thing. Jay Z got. I, I think after a month of being an underdog, the first time this year, first time in a long time, right? They use that and they get after it. Forty two thirty eight bucks. This is one of those moments where you're sort of torn. <laughs> I, I do believe Ohio State can win it's this It's going to be a great game. Why don't you just, I, I believe just throw your reverse psychology believe, mojo on it? I believe Ohio State can win this game. I believe what, what Jay-Z just said. This is going to be a classic game. I, I don't think that this is a game where Ohio State's going to come out and, and look like they don't belong on the field. I, I think 38-30, 38-31 type final. It could go either way. Of course, I'm going to say I think Ohio State's going to find a way to win this game. But I could see it being 38-31 Georgia either way. I, I think Ohio State will score 30 points. I said the other day, if they score 30, that they'll win. So, let me say 38-31 Buckeyes. Clear-minded and crafty, the Buckeyes find a way. Yeah, I think that they were like, they were just so close to showing that against Michigan, right? Like, it was missed opportunities, mm -hmm. both sides of the football. And you could say, well, scoreboard didn't lie. The fourth quarter happened, and, <clears throat> and that's fine. I certainly understand all that. But – when that team reaches its potential, and we haven't seen it yet, this would be a good time. No better, it. no better time than to put it out there. I think these are the two best teams in the country, even mm -hmm. even notwithstanding what happened on November 26th. Yep. And I think Ohio State will finally find that with a month to prepare, a month to be healthy, and it's going to be a great game. I'm really looking forward to the, the week in Atlanta and getting ready for it. And then on New Year's Eve, the peach will drop in Atlanta, and it'll be 35-34 Ohio State. Ooh. Wow, missed extra point. <clears throat> missed extra point. Two field somehow. Goal, two field goals. Two field, two field goals. <laughs> and a missed field goal for Georgia. So to speak. Uh, that's what we expect. It's going to be an interesting it's week. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to have full coverage uh, as we get down there to Atlanta. Berm and I getting ready for that uh, with the podcast and with OhioState.Rivals.com. We appreciate Roosters. Had to, to scramble a little bit to get this together. We want to make sure that we had another fun, casual chat with these boys before we all hit the road. Hope everybody had some happy holidays, that they enjoy the week ahead and the game. On New Year's Eve. is a happy ending. Stay hey. from <laughs> From Bob's lips to your ears. For, for Bill Landis, Justin Zwick, Bobby Carpenter, Jeremy Birmingham, I am Austin Ward. We will see you next time from Roosters in the Horseshoe Lounge. Go Bucks.